Hello, this is Lynn Brown, Brown's Black Mesa Custom Tree and Saddle. I want to show you the ugly Betty today, explain to you the basics and maybe a few differences between this and the low down roper, which is built on the same bars, different fork, different channel, but not too different. The ugly Betty number one has a set of bars that we developed quite a while ago work extremely well for any horse. I'll show you the tree here in a minute. First we'll go over the saddle. Most of my roping saddles I put a rawhide lip on the horn so that it lasts, so the rope doesn't tear up the edge of the horn. As well, this has the basic border tooling, comes on a full rough out saddle. We get to the rigging and we've got big heavy d-ring stainless steel and I threw drill these d-rings to put in the eighth inch copper rivets so the d-rings held in through the copper with the copper rivet to the top layer and to the bottom layer of the the uh, drop yoke here and it is a drop yoke rigging. The rigging is dropped, but it's pretty well out of your way. The uh, center piece runs up into the square part of the uh, D and is sewn right here. So you're holding it from going down, you're holding it from going up or down here and here. This lasts for 20 or 30 years, I know. I had an old saddle maker that's built a lot of rope and saddles and roped himself who showed me this. We do the same thing here on the rear, on the flank these. So whether it's the ugly Betty or the low down roper, it gets the through rivets on the D's. This is a three inch D, this is a three and a half inch D. When I have uh, fender leather that I don't think is quite heavy enough, I line it. This one's lined with the American Buffalo a la Bison. It's flexible. It's six ounce leather, but it gives you a fender that's going to last you forever. If I have good, heavy enough piece of leather, then I don't line it. But uh, the seat is not just a seat that's glued down and laid over the top of the pillion that's put on the tree. What I do first is to put a layer of skirting on the ground seat that I've built into the tree and that skirting is going to run out past this pillion seat going to run out into here then a little bit of foam goes in and this is neoprene foam it's not the soft stuff you get typically and then the upholstery leather goes down over that then we shape put this seat on shape it, it has to be wetted and shaped when it's dry, we glue it all the way through here. Then we carefully take the whole thing off and sew all the way through all three layers. Saddle skirting base seat, then the upholstery leather, and then the one piece seat running across here. This last, this lets you take the saddle apart if anything happens bad in the way of an accident with it. Let you take it apart, work on it, and not be tearing it completely up and trying to build a new one when you get through. So that's the basics of the construction. The lacing you see is not in the skirts, it's in the rear housing. The skirts are open. The skirts are open, they're left to where they can move just a little bit. In here, not much, because you don't have much movement necessary in here. But you do have an open channel all the way down, which I do in all my saddles. So if you have a backbone, it's no problem. If you have spinous processes, you can see it's no problem, in other words. It lets the horse move, keeps you in closer contact, and it keeps the edge of these skirts from being so close that they bite into the spine or the edges of the spinous process and costal muscles. So this has opened up pretty good through here. 
the uh, gullet. This is a tree, it's pretty generous. We'll talk tree now. Because I think you have the basics on the saddle. Oh, one thing I didn't mention. That is, although we're nice and heavy here, and uh, so on, we have plenty of leather in the corners of the skirts, nothing curls up, that's going to last you forever. We've got one layer of skirting right here that's flexible. It lets you feel your horse, it lets your horse feel you. Everybody stays comfortable. You're riding off the loop. And the loop works with no bump up under the bar of the tree. Too many roping trees have no slot underneath for the strip strap. They leave a bump there, and that keeps your horse from reaching. It makes him antsy in the box. Keeps him from stopping because his back has to come up. All the problems you have, many of them trace right back to the stirrup strap bump, and I have ropers drive three or four hundred miles with their horse. They got two white patches right here, it won't work anymore. And puts one of my saddles on, and the horse starts working immediately. Stirrup strap bump is a part of that, there's a lot more to it than that. We've got the gullet that we're dealing with here. No pinch. It doesn't pinch any horse. We'll set on a young horse and do quite well. A downhill horse and do quite well. Because what I've done is put, put more twist in these bars than you'll find in any other bar in the marketplace. This is what you call a whole lot of hand and eye pattern work. It's not something you can copy off somebody else and say, well, I got it, unless they want to bend the money for a new saddle and take it apart and try to do it. The, uh, I've had them call me wanting to buy them, <laughs> but I don't sell the trees. This is uh, a uh, seven and three quarter inch go. I'll measure it for you and give you an idea. I'm also going to explain something else about gullet width. So we're, well, on this one, we're setting just a little wider than that. We're setting at a full eight right here. Down here, this is where everything changes from a regular saddle. Down there, we're setting at 12. So most six and three quarter saddles here are setting oftentimes at 13 to 14 to 14 and a half down here. That gives you your angle problem. That puts more curve in a tree when you don't contact down here first. You contact down here first, that gives you a straighter tree. That means when you cinch this tree up, you don't pop way up in the rear. This is a little mold of a 15-hand Arab. So boys, I got a great big rope and saddle on a 15-hand Arab with a couple of Navajos. But that is uh, the Ugly Betty tree. The bars and the set of the bars are the same as the low down. What I was going to tell you a while ago, something that changes just a little bit here and there. And that is the true width of a tree when you measure it right back here. This one's five and a half inches width of the bars on the back of the tree. Most of my trees hit five to five and a half there. The thicker the fork, front to rear, the wider the gutter measurement, okay? Because bars are moving outward. So the wider the measurement, even though we haven't changed anything, if we put a little thin fork on here, like this, it's going to be a narrower gullet measurement. Nothing will have changed here on the width of the tree bars. This is how complicated, deceiving, puzzling, saddle trees, quote, saddle fit, and all this other stuff can be if you start detailing it that way. You've got a candle on Ugly Betty that is a four inch, measured right from here. And if you measure it from the seat, You're a five and a half. 
won't change it too much. We're going to add somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, three-eighths of an inch here. Maybe a quarter would do it, but almost three-eighths. We're going to add a little bit here for the shine roll and the leather that goes on top of that. Ugly Betty has a little taller candle than what the bow-down roper has. The fork is slightly rounded from the low down. You have uh, maybe a touch more notch right there in the TM fork. But, strap strap loops. Got a cowboy in here from Wyoming, works full time, 90,000 acre ranch. He had his choice of getting the groove on the bottom side in the tree or getting the loops and the groove on the top side. He looked at the thickness of these bars. He said, give me the loops. <laughs> he wants one that don't have to worry about ever breaking. So we gain strength here. We narrow the seat at the same time for the rider here. Because if we build it thick enough to stay together and be really strong, we have to thicken a bar to get a top and a bottom groove. In most cases, here, you keep things a little narrower for the rider. That twist in the bar gives you a steeper angle here as the bar opens up in the front and comes together at the bottom in the front. That means you have a narrower seat in the first place. It won't feel like you're riding on anybody else's eight inch gullet. So the, uh, the uh, number four dally post is what we normally use on Ugly Buddy. Some people get the DM8. You have your choice. We can stand it up, which this is a normal position here. We can lean it forward or we can stand it straight up and down. doesn't matter. But uh, this is what's normal, typical, and average. It's what you see on the finished saddle right over here that I was showing you earlier. So I hope this gives you a little better understanding of the ugly Betty. It's one heck of a comfortable seat. It's got a great flat spot for the rider. It doesn't have hardly any rise. So it's easy to get forward. Easy to get forward on this saddle and rope. Here to here, you've just got an inch and a half where your stirrup strap's going to start. From there to there. It's going to be an inch and a half, maybe two inches. And uh, well, we're going to be closer to an inch and a half. But you've got a flat spot right here. You've got a seat that got a nice dish, but it doesn't sock you back into it because it's rising upward as it goes. A low front on the seat lets you get forward, stay there. Easy to get up and forward. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on the Ugly Betty.